For decades, people have been conditioned to believe that sorting their plastics and dropping them off in the right bin would help save the planet. But the truth behind recycling is far murkier than we've been led to believe. While we think we're doing our part, the harsh reality is that much of that plastic never gets a second life. So what happens to all the plastic we believe is being recycled? What you're about to uncover will leave you questioning the systems you thought were working to save the planet. Where does it really end up? According to a report by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, as of 2021, only about 8.7% of plastic waste in the U.S. is actually recycled. This shockingly low number paints a bleak picture of a broken system. But that's not all. Another study from The Guardian in 2022 revealed that the U.S. exported nearly 1.21 billion pounds of plastic waste to other countries in just one year, often to nations with limited infrastructure for managing their own waste, let alone the world's. These figures aren't just statistics, they're proof of a system that doesn't work as it should. It's clear that recycling, as it exists today, is more of an illusion than a real solution. But where does this global plastic trade really lead? What if I told you that recycling is often just a way for wealthier countries to shift the burden of their waste onto poorer nations? This practice has been happening for decades, with richer nations like the US exporting their plastic waste to countries across Asia. It may seem like an easy solution for developed nations, but the impact on recipient countries is devastating. Villages in Malaysia, overwhelmed by plastic waste they didn't produce, now serve as dumping grounds for the world's unwanted plastics. Meanwhile, families in these communities suffer as their water becomes polluted, their air toxic, and their environment unlivable. The plastic waste, which began its journey as recyclable, never sees the inside of a recycling facility. Instead, it accumulates in massive heaps, contaminating everything in its path. The global plastic trade has become a silent crisis, one that disproportionately affects countries with the least resources to manage it. But why are these countries accepting foreign plastic waste? What's really going on behind the scenes? The truth is, both unsettling and alarming, as you'll soon find out. But hey, before we continue, if this video got you thinking, don't just watch and run. Hit that subscribe button. It's free and more useful than plastic straws. Southeast Asia's Plastic Wastelands The global plastic trade isn't just a recent development. In 2018, after China implemented a ban on foreign plastic waste, nations like the US and the UK began sending their plastic to Southeast Asia. Countries like Malaysia, Thailand and Indonesia saw a surge in plastic imports they were ill-equipped to handle. According to Greenpeace, Malaysia imported over 872,000 tons of plastic waste in 2018 alone, an overwhelming amount for a country with limited recycling infrastructure. Worse yet, much of this waste is contaminated and non-recyclable, leaving local communities to bear the brunt of a crisis that wasn't theirs to begin with. This is a clear example of environmental injustice, wealthy nations outsourcing their pollution to developing countries with disastrous consequences for both the people and the environment. But where does this plastic end up when these nations can't handle it? For the countries receiving plastic waste, the influx is nothing short of catastrophic. Instead of being properly recycled, vast amounts of plastic are dumped into rivers, burned in open pits, or left to decay in massive landfills. These practices are turning once thriving ecosystems into toxic wastelands. Imagine standing on the shores of a river that used to provide fresh water and fish for local communities. Now, it's choked with plastic bottles, bags, and microplastics swirling together in a thick soup of waste. Marine life, including fish, turtles, and seabirds, ingest these plastics, often dying slow, painful deaths. Even worse, these plastics eventually break down into microplastics, making their way into the food chain and ultimately reaching human bodies. The environmental costs are staggering, but the human costs are equally alarming. People living in these areas are facing serious health risks, all because of plastic waste that was supposed to be recycled. The situation is dire. 
A 2023 study from Plastic Oceans International found that over 8 million tons of plastic enter the ocean every year, much of it from mismanaged waste in countries receiving foreign plastic. The Sitaram River in Indonesia, once a source of life for local communities, has been dubbed one of the most polluted rivers in the world due to overwhelming presence of plastic waste. According to a report by National Geographic, over 90% of the plastic that ends up in the ocean comes from just 10 rivers, most of them in Asia, rivers that are now serving as conveyor belts for foreign waste. For people living near these plastic wastelands, the consequences are even more personal and deadly. A Deadly Alternative When plastic waste becomes too much to handle, some communities are forced to take drastic measures. They burn it. This isn't just a local issue, it's a global health crisis. The open burning of plastic releases toxic chemicals into the air, leading to severe health problems for those nearby. And the worst part? This toxic smoke doesn't just stay in one place, it spreads across the globe. But why is burning plastic so dangerous? And why is it even allowed in the first place? See, burning plastic isn't just harmful, it's deadly. The World Health Organization has linked the open burning of plastic to a range of serious health conditions, including respiratory problems, heart disease, and cancer. According to a 2022 report from the Journal of Environmental Science and Pollution Research, burning plastic releases harmful pollutants like dioxins, mercury, and polychlorinated biphenyls, which have long-term effects on both human health and the environment. These chemicals are known to cause severe damage to the immune system, disrupt hormone production, and lead to developmental problems in children. But for many communities overwhelmed with plastic waste, burning it seems like the only option. The toxic smoke from these fires doesn't just harm the people living nearby, it travels. Winds carry these pollutants across borders, affecting air quality in regions far beyond where the plastic was burned. The truth behind plastic recycling is grim, but that doesn't mean the situation is hopeless. Around the world, innovators, activists, and even governments are stepping up, demanding real solutions to the plastic crisis. A 2023 report from the Ellen MacArthur Foundation highlighted innovative recycling technologies such as chemical recycling, which breaks down plastic into its original components, allowing for true recycling rather than downcycling. Countries like Sweden are also leading the way with advanced waste-to-energy systems, where non-recyclable waste is incinerated to generate electricity, reducing landfill waste while producing power. According to the European Environment Agency, Sweden recycles nearly 99% of all household waste through a combination of traditional recycling and waste-to-energy technology. But technological advancements alone won't solve the problem. In 2021, the European Union implemented a ban on certain single-use plastics, such as straws and cutlery, aiming to cut down on the amount of plastic entering the waste stream in the first place. However, the US and other nations need to follow suit with stricter regulations on plastic production and waste exports. So, if you don't want this video to end up in the trash like plastics, like and subscribe. It's the least wasteful thing you'll do today.